And now shifting gears, we bring you the powerful conversion story of one woman who is using her international platform to defend unborn babies. Kathy Ireland started her successful modeling career when she was just 16. She has appeared on the covers of Vogue, Forbes, and Harper's Bazaar, and went on to create one of the most lucrative licensing brands in the world, Kathy Ireland Worldwide. Live Action recently awarded Ireland with a Life Award for her outspoken pro-life advocacy. We sat down with this supermodel turned super mogul during the Life Awards, where she shared her journey of becoming a pro-life Christian. We have that interview for you right now. Kathy Ireland, thank you so much for being with us today. We're honored to have you sit down with us. Oh, thank you, Prudence. It's an honor to be with you. Of course. Talk to me a little bit about the events of your life that have led you to this moment and this day where you're spending your weekend celebrating life um, here at Live Actions Gala, receiving an award from them. I, I always believed in God, but I didn't know him. Mm. I didn't know that I didn't know him. And uh, therefore, I was, you know, making all kinds of messes in my life. Mom got saved when she was uh, in nursing school. I was a teenager. Without telling me, she stuck a Bible in my suitcase. Uh, I'd never read one in my life. I was uh, working in Paris. It was a lonely time, a hard time, and it was out of jet lag and boredom that I opened up. It's like, I don't know how to read a Bible. <laughs> and I opened up to Matthew, and as I began reading, I knew that what I was holding in my hands was the truth. I was a rebellious teenager questioning who really knows what's true. And as I read about Jesus, it was, there was nobody in the room with me telling me, you know, this or that, or think this or think that. It was just, I wanna follow him. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus became my Lord and Savior and best friend at that moment. And I regret that the very thing that led me to him, I avoided for so long. I mean, I, I was saved with him at that moment, yet I was making so many messes. I would read scripture, and some of it I would love, and some of it I would just be like, oh, that's probably a, a translation issue or a cultural thing, or maybe it's a typo, Interesting. but it doesn't pertain to me. So I was, in my arrogance, trying to mold God into what I wanted him to be rather than surrendering and letting him shape me into the person he made me to be. So for years, I identified as a pro-choice Christian. I mean, it, it doesn't even make any sense. It's an oxymoron, but in my ignorance, that's what I believed. Uh, and then I, I worked as a model in the last century. I share with people I'm not an actress. I got the movies to prove it, yet it paid the bills for a, a period of time, so I would take jobs when I could get them. I had an audition for a movie of the week, and the topic was uh, choice and abortion. Wow. And the project claimed to be neutral um, and share both sides of the story. Yet when reading the script, it was clearly a very strong pro-choice slant because the pro-life people were um, crazy or uh, it just had some real serious challenges. Sure. But that was okay with me because even though in my little baby steps as a Christian, I had made the commitment to, I'm just go going to accept projects that I think would glorify God. Um, this seemed okay. It's a woman's body, it's her choice. So it seemed all right, I was okay with it. I'm driving to the audition, lots of traffic, lots of time to think. And then I get there and room full of actors long waiting line for my turn so I had more time to think and then it was my turn to go in to the producers and meet them and they told me it was a very important film for women and one of the producers said you know very kindly he said you are pro-choice aren't you and as the yes fell out of my mouth mm -hmm. I knew it wasn't true wow. and I knew that I was in the worst place for me which was on the fence and all that time to think, I realized I'd never really thought about that issue before. Totally choked on the audition, went home, husband, um, a, an ER doctor. So I went through the medical books that we had at home, just determined to figure out where do I stand on this? I can't be on the fence on something so important. Right. 
And as I read, I saw that at the moment of conception, a new life comes into being. The genetic blueprint is there. The unique fingerprint is there. The sex is determined. Uh, it's, it's alive and it's growing. What kind of a life is it? And according to the law of biogenesis, all life comes from pre-existing life. And each species reproduces after their own kind. So human beings only can reproduce other human beings. We don't start as one species and become human somewhere along the way. So I was not happy. I did not want to be pro-life. And my husband was like, I, and I showed him, and he was pro-choice too. He's like, how did I miss this? Wow. It's like right in front of my face. How did I miss that? I called Planned Parenthood and said, okay, help me out. Right. Um, what's your best argument for being pro-choice? And I was told it's just a clump of cells. If you get it early enough, it doesn't even look like a baby. And even in my ignorance, my response was, is that it? That's your best argument? Because we're all clumps of cells and the unborn doesn't look like a baby the same way a teenager doesn't look like a senior citizen. Right. Once you know what the unborn is, I mean, we all have to do everything we can to protect the most vulnerable among us. Right, beautifully said. And Kathy, so many women have stories like yours where a recognition of faith has led them to become pro-life. I wonder, what is your advice to women who are scared to just, you know, trust in the Lord? To, to the, they're, they're holding on to, you know, some, some reason that maybe they should have an abortion. Like, right. what's, what would your advice be to those people who are scared? Well, I mean, my heart goes out to women who are scared and women who have had abortions. It's estimated one in four women have had an abortion. And it's devastating. women are uh, not given all the information to make an informed choice. They're told, as I was told by Planned Parenthood, it's just a clump of cells. Right. They're not given an ultrasound to see what their baby looks like. It's just rush you right in and rush you right out. It can be the most convenient choice for boyfriend, family, doctors. Right. 15 minute abortion, $1,800 versus nine months of pregnancy. And babies can arrive at inconvenient hours. So while it can be liberating for everyone else, for the woman, it is not. And many women refer to their abortion years or decades later as the aftermath. And what I would say to that woman in answer to your question is trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. That baby that you are carrying is a Mago Day made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. God gives life, God gives eternal life. And for the woman who's had an abortion, my encouragement would be that no, that nothing is too big for God. He will forgive. And he tells us, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we repent, he redeems. He paid it all on the cross. His last words were, to tell, to tell us die, it is finished, debt paid in full. It's his grace. And so we don't have to do anything to earn that. It is a free gift. And his word also tells us in James, we're not saved by works, but we're saved for them. Mm. And he has so many good works planned for us, prepared for us. And that's why I'm so grateful to you, to everyone who is fighting on the front lines for the most vulnerable. And in these days and times, we've all got to be in this battle. Amen. Well, Kathy, we're grateful for you and all the work that you're doing on the front lines as well. And we're thankful that you could sit down with us for a bit today. Thank you Aww, for sharing your story. Thank you, Prudence. Yeah. Thank you. God, God bless, bless you. you. Thank you. Me too.